how you doing people? Hope you're all well. We've all had a good weekend so far. So, I've got a story to tell. Um, I've got a Glasgow gangster. Um, I don't know why I say his name, but his second name is McMillan. Um, this has gone back a, a good few years now. Um, I, was in, I was up in the bookies, Coral bookies, so I got a phone call. Of a guy who had no one got um, a few boys from Manchester and a lad of Hamilton, um, no me, but another lad of Hamilton from my area, um, seven and a half years sent to prison, stunt Queen's evidence when he's in when he's in mob. So that guy before I knew he was a a rat, in other words, put me up and asked me to go to uh, his house. He says, chat the door and tell my wife to send me to the poison room. I wonder what the poison room is. This guy was a multi-millionaire and the poison room was where he smoked, say, smoked his um, crack cocaine. So I've chatted his door, his wife answered. I says, um, can I speak to such and such? I just got up the stairs, so I got up the stair. And um, he's sitting back like that, his big glass pipe. Sitting, chilled back like that, big glass pipe. He says, come in here, Gary. So I walked in, he says, this is uh, a senior McMillan, this is junior McMillan. He says, guys, this is a young, uh, young chap that I've been telling you about. Blah blah blah. I was only about 19, I was maybe 20 maximum. So the guy just goes straight to it. He was like, What are you doing, right, pal? And I was going ball, I was always two steps ahead. I was like, After the the, 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 the the story I told about the, the DS, the, the drug squad, when I had an, when I had an affair with one of them, um, I was always I was cautious after that. So I didn't want to get into too much detail. So I said to him, Listen, I've only just met you guys. He says, listen, we are, they tell me a bit about their And he says, um, they offered me 10 kilos of coke, 500,000 ease, 500,000 guys upon. I'm like myself, I'm in heat. I'm like, what the fuck? These guys are on another level. So I says, can I get back to you on this? So I've left. I knew the answer right there, man. And it was a hell motherfucking no. Because, I mean, I was already knee deep in the game, but I was also very loyal to the guys who was running me. Because they looked deaf than me, they were sweet as I know it was. Also, they show up, they phoned me up. I says, Listen, bro, I said to, to the guy who introduced me to them, I'm not involved in them, they're another fucking league. Also, they show up, I went to EH1. No, sorry, I tell a lie, I went a bit too far in the story there. So, they phoned me up, I said, this is, Do you know anybody else? The guy who I told the last story about that was down for crack cocaine, he just got to stop them. So I thought I'll get him put on his feet. And I just said to my attempt murder case, I've just came back to the island Rossi and um, I put him onto these boys. Not to my knowledge, they gave him an ounce of cocaine to a tester. But the way gangsters work, they're gonna give you an ounce of a tester. But you phone them back up and say that's so sweet. They're expecting in return. Listen, I've got maybe five more quid towards it, maybe three hundred pounds, even a hundred pounds. You phone these boys up and say, that ounce is good, that gear's good. I'll take some off you. You've got to make the first move and say to them, I've got something. Otherwise, that's shown, that's shown loyalty, right? There's a lot of guys who really just gave me stuff and tell me, wait, 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 and let me know what the weight is. Because not a lot of guys don't like keeping scales on about them. They just use a hammer, bum for it, for it, and try and just guesstimate it, as they say. <coughs> so, he's saying the stuff, he smoked it, he smoked the water. The guys came through, he dragged them into the motor, turned it to energy. He would put a gun in his seat. The guy's a bit of comedian, right? No way why, he guy's a funny ass motherfucker. So he's ended up coming out with some funny ass shit, and the guy says, Steve O, if the guy wasn't as funny, he says, I wouldn't have laughing, or the boy's fucking brains out. So a week later, EH1, the very first EH1, now you go to EH1, and I'm still talking to him. The only way through, I've got these phone calls, um, Street Rave, John Messini, Street Rave. All the old school, which is street days, Ken for the 90s, all the DJs were all there, K Class, um, all, all that, and people like him, it's people, right? So, I get a phone call, Steve, don't bring nothing in, the Sanford does are here, so I've got a driver from Motherwell, and we muck a Paul, so we pull up, we just rattle about two ounces of coke before we went in, fucking hire a kite, we got there, there was no Sanford dogs, so we went in, we saw Tony T, right, McMillan. So the guy who I put, I go, put, put I want to, Ron, he's on a runner. I'm like, what the fuck? Then we told him he's walked there. He's like, Steve, listen, tell him I'm here for a good time. I'm not here for any violence. I'll deal with him later. So 
A week after that, I go to visit Ronnie to say to Ronnie, if you're going to get your finger out here, it's like pain in the sky ass. There are no guys to be fucked with. Ronnie's dancing, celebrating. He's dead, kid, he's dead. I'm like, who's dead? Newspaper. Man dies on motorway trying to save OAP, old age pensioner. Right? The man goes with Amy, Tony. Right? So the following day, newspaper. Two pages. McMillan, Miss McMillan. One, uh, one of the Glasgow's most notorious gangsters. At one point, whatever year it was, he helped go with the highest purity cocaine ever smuggled into Scotland. Um, they were his rivals with Jamie Stevens. Nice man. This guy was not to be fucked with. I said, it was Ronnie, he's maybe dead. Your debt's still on his head. So, three months goes by. You get a chap at the door. You got my dad's money. Ronnie took me and he had a heart attack. So he's went for selling his old house. He's pulling the van. He's bungo to the south London gang slap up money. To then, he had to sell. No, oh, sorry, his dad had to bail him out. His dad a boulder. So, if you're involved with big crime families, and you're involved with gangsters, even in their grave, they'll still be quitting their debt. So never forget that. These guys are not to be fucked with. I got interested in all them when I was a pup. I know more about them than you'll ever know. Any people. That's another story, so be safe. But then again, folks say gangsters are scumbags, this and that. The world I came in, the world I grew up in, the old school gangsters, they only done stuff to their own kind. But nowadays, the young ones have no morals. That's one thing I can say. They've no morals. They, they, they shoot us for the rains, they shoot us for the ladies, women, kids. The old school ones, they're the real deal. You don't get that. They're a different breed. Peace out.